Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday morning's devotion. And just to explain, because we're doing this kind of leapfrogging through the book of Acts, that our Monday and Tuesday devotions took place before Paul's visit to Ephesus. This one is immediately afterwards. And Jeff, I thought, gave a really brilliant exposition on Sunday of Paul's ministry in Ephesus. But after the uproar has died down, Paul stays on a little while, um, exercising his ministry of encouragement before moving on to Macedonia and then to Greece, where he stays for three months, um, encouraging the saints there and then uh, returns when he hears about a plot of the Jews to scupper his ministry, returns via Macedonia. And you'll notice uh, from reading chapter 20 that he's accompanied by what sounds like an official delegation from the churches that he's planted in Macedonia and Galatia and Phrygia. And this is because they're taking with them the collection of money which has been held among the churches to take to Jerusalem to encourage the church there which is really under, undergoing persecution and difficulty. And from that, we see, first of all, how Paul is a great builder of teams. A number of those names will appear later, especially in Paul's letters. It shows something of the solidarity of the churches at that time, that together they're working to relieve uh, the saints in Jerusalem. And of course, on a very practical level, it would have been given some security to Paul as he's traveling with a large sum of money. Uh, we notice also that Luke has returned from Philippi. We're going back to those we passages that we heard earlier. Uh, the delegation goes off to Troas. Uh, Paul and Luke uh, remain to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread before they set off to rejoin them. And we're going to pick up the story in verse 7. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting and seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said, he's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. And after talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Well, this little bit of the story provides a fascinating insight into the life of the early church. You'll notice they were meeting on the first day of the week the day of Jesus' resurrection, which will more and more become the focus for Christian worship. They're breaking bread with all its significance of the death and resurrection of Jesus. They're meeting in a home, uh, clearly one large enough to accommodate quite a large number of people. And central to all of this is Paul's teaching of the gospel. You may notice some echoes of the Last Supper, like Jesus, Paul will soon be off to Jerusalem to face suffering. Uh, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread is a, a kind of focus for these events. And we even have a resurrection. Now, Eutychus, the name means lucky. <laughs> he doesn't feel very lucky, does he? It was the sort of name given to a slave. And if that's the case, Eutychus would have had a long day working and must have been very tired when he arrived for the meeting. The atmosphere would have been heavy and the darkness and the smoke given off by the lamps that have been lit. And before long, he drifts off and falls three stories to the ground below. And if there are echoes of the New Testament story of the Last Supper, what follows echoes the Old Testament and Elijah's raising of the sun of the widow of Zarephath. Paul rushes down, throws himself on the boy, puts his arms around him 
and then declares that he's alive. And uh, the dead Eutychus is restored to life and the church, not surprisingly, celebrates and is greatly comforted. And just one last thing to notice from this passage is that it marks a transition in Paul's ministry. Up till now, the focus has been on church planting in uh, in Berea, um, in Pisidian, Antioch, in Iconium, all of these different towns and cities. But now the emphasis will be on suffering, on trials, and on imprisonment. All that um, Jesus had predicted would be part of Paul's ministry. So may God bless you today and may this story speak to you and encourage you.